Interior design shows are inspiring, but reality can be a lot different from HGTV. Today, we'll uncover common misconceptions about the design and renovation process, discover the latest in design trends, and learn the truth about home renovation projects from timelines to costs. Welcome to Elevate, where we explore the latest in elevated living. Hear from the local artisans, business owners, and innovators who make Las Vegas extraordinary and whose stories and insights will help you live your best life. This is episode one with Daniel Mattis, principal designer and CEO of Desired Space, one of Las Vegas' premier residential and commercial design firms. Daniel, what's going on in the world of design these days? A uh, lot's going on right now, Rob. Um, I, I, you know that the market right now is really busy. Um, obviously, everyone's buying homes. So right now, as an interior design firm, we're really busy trying to change those homes to people's desired space. Um, so that's obviously one of the goals of hiring an interior design firm to do that for you. Do you find yourself doing more renovations because a lot of these, you know, custom beautiful neighborhoods mm -hmm. that have been established, you know, 15, 20 years old now yeah. are coming across dated and needing renovations? Or are you doing more work with just brand new homeowners? That have no, it's in? actually 100% right is a lot of renovations because a lot of people are walking to these older homes. Um, obviously, they're snatching them up as quickly as possible, mm -hmm. trying to get them with cash deals, things like that. But Ideally, they want to change them into homes that they love. And a lot of them are dated, especially like in those established neighborhoods that you had mentioned before. Got it. I'm Rob Jensen, broker owner of the Rob Jensen Company. And I find quite often that when meeting with sellers, I'm doing my best to talk them into making some renovations to at least make the home just pot more, a little, you know, it's going to get them a higher sales price. It's going to be more popular. It's going to mm -hmm. sell faster. Yeah. What do you find? What, you know, what are people doing with renovations these days? I think people are coming into the fact that they obviously want a space that they're going to be there for a while. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they already went through the hassle of trying to find a home, putting a bid in, um, either cash or, you know, whatever mm -hmm. their deal is. But ideally, they want to make their forever home at this point because they want to be able to establish their kind of nest of where they're going to be. Right. So how comprehensive are some of these projects? Uh, they're pretty comprehensive down to framing, down to studs, down to space planning. So even demoing whole sections of the house are part of this new plan. Um, people are going to the extent, not just painting, not just putting flooring, but actual space planning. So that includes new floor plans, uh, new major additions to the space, just because they want to make it as perfect as possible. Got it. So one of my experiences is that People obviously are with HGTV, people seem to be more excited about design and whether it's picking out, you know, the Einstein, you know, gold fixtures and a lot of people just enjoy the sort of do it yourself. Of course. And, and some people have it that knack, some people don't quite have the right, oh, that's the right touch. You know, maybe they pick some really exciting, you know, fixtures or flooring, mm -hmm. but it doesn't quite work together. You know, what is it like when working with a professional, when you come in and meet with somebody that let's just say, let's say they're not going to knock down any walls, but they want to, you know, change out some flooring, paint, maybe do some light fixtures, maybe kind of renovate the kitchen a bit with refacing cabinets and, and counters like what is just that time frame timeline look like so that time frame is uh you know pretty extensive you're probably looking at a few weeks uh just because we go into the first part as an initial consultation with our clients so from there we kind of get to know the user when we design we make sure to create a design that's custom to them so what's their lifestyle like what's their family style like what's their life cycle like are they in their retirement uh, are they a brand new family those are all factors that go into the design element it's not just just picking a pretty color because you need to be able to figure out a design that meets their needs so i always ask two questions who are the users and what are those functions of those spaces so obviously if you entertain a lot we'll make sure that we have durable finishes um, if you want something light and airy because you want to have an open space we keep that in mind um, if you're an you know an older couple that wants more of a slow down pace you know we can look at options for finishes that make that sense to that lifestyle that you're having so those are two big deals that we look at is the user and the functions. Uh, from there, we kind of go to design consultations. So we go over preliminary design options. Uh, we throw out design schemes to you that we proposed based on the programming notes that we had. 
again, users and functions. And then from there, they can massage the design to make selections. So you're not forced into any design. You're given plenty of options to be able to customize it to your liking. So Daniel, tell me about a success story with a client that you're really, really proud of. Perhaps, you know, a situation didn't start out oh, so yeah, well. Oh, yeah, yeah. It didn't start out so well for a client of mine. Um, so she had attempted to start this project on her own. Okay. Um, and she did. She finished one room as an example. It was a bathroom. Um, and she got it installed. She she got it all together. And at this point, she was already stressed. You know, the vendors were late or not on time or the materials didn't look like what she had specified or the design tile layout was wrong. She just had error after error after error. So she was at her wits end. Um, so she went to a vendor of ours, Del Tile here in Vegas, to try to get some, you know, ideas for design for that for the next three bathrooms that she has. So she has four total. Okay. Um, and obviously she was there, she was taught looking at samples. And again, she was overwhelmed. There's thousands of options for materials. And again, um, I worry about some of my clients because some of them have decision fatigue because mm -hmm. there's so many decisions to make with just a bathroom. Yeah. You've got counters, flooring, uh, paint, grout, edge details, cabinets, hardware. You know, it just goes on and on and on. And those are details where she got really exhausted. Uh, so she's looking at tile, trying to figure out how she can fix this bathroom that looks absolutely terrible mm -hmm. she's on the verge of tears and she sees a you know a publication of mine and my card and she sees free consultation so she gives us a call and we come out to her home and kind of figure out what her design aesthetic is um and she's obviously overwhelmed she tells me all of this she's like everything has been wrong the vendors have been late the materials are wrong. Mm -hmm. everything's just a disaster and i am tired of making decisions just one bathroom um so we came in and kind of looked at her users and her functions, figured out what her design aesthetic was, uh, really formulated design. We presented those options to her. She didn't have to run around to different vendors. She didn't have to run around across town to 16 different options to look at flooring or counters, mm -hmm. or she just sat there, selected which one she loved and what she wanted to change, made it, made it her own mm -hmm. without having to do all that work. Um, and then the best part is she didn't have to worry about logistics for the materials, ordering it, make sure it arrived on time or scheduling the subcontractors or vendors. She, by the end of the project, not only did the project look beautiful, but it was executed perfectly. It was under budget. It was on time. And she did, was not exhausted by it at all. She was absolutely happy by the process because she had known that it got done beautifully and it got executed perfectly. And that's the reason why you hire a professional. But she was really quite happy. And she was also going for like the Nancy Myers uh, look. She's like, oh, now I feel like I'm in a Nancy Myers movie. Oh. Like, that's the case. That's the case. And that's success. Yeah, exactly. What would you say, you know, like in any profession, the, the, the professionals make things look easy, whether they're, you know, ski. <laughs> that's our job. <laughs> whether, you know, yeah, whether it's a, an athlete or yeah. designer or us selling homes. What would you say is commonly like sort of underestimated like the behind the scenes work that you do yeah. that where people because sometimes look when i'm talking to sellers we're not necessarily getting as comprehensive as you are because because our sellers when i'm talking to them about doing some renovations to mm -hmm. sell the house we've we've got to do you know what's going to add to their bottom line of and course. not get too customized to their own taste because it's really about adding to that you yeah. know, bottom line mm -hmm. And, you know, when I talk to some people about designers, you know, to them, the idea that like, oh, why am I going to spend someone thousands, spend thousands of dollars on having someone pick some paint colors and, and some light fixtures when I can just go do that myself? You know, that's a great question because it's a common misconception that, you know, you see a show and like, let's say HGTV, you're like, mm -hmm. okay, great. They can do a bathroom remodel for $5,000 in like three days. Well, that's not reality at all. Mm -hmm. The true reality is um, what we're doing in the background is the actual execution of the design. 10% of our service is just the design. The other 90 is execution. So that's coordinating vendors, quotes, contractors, subcontractors, logistics of materials, scheduling the project, quality control. Those elements are what make our projects look successful. Um, and most people are like, oh, he just picks a paint color. He just picks a tile. No, there's a lot of information that goes into there and to actually execute it is another big deal. So there's a lot of factors that go into it. You know, again, when you're dealing with a designer, you only see the pretty stuff. You don't see the backlog of drawings, 
CAD drawings, elevations, floor plans, renderings, specifications, material orders, spreadsheets, mm -hmm. the whole thing. And you know, it's a it's a very detailed process. But that's where I think a lot of people lose that disconnect. They think it's just picking a color. It's a lot more detailed than that. Yeah, I mean, it's and it's not that this is just supposed to be a well, it's not supposed to be a commercial for you, but it's supposed yeah. to be a commercial for using, you know, oh, not a commercial at yeah. all. <laughs> yeah. It's supposed to be like touching <laughs> upon using professionals. And of yeah. course, you do a fantastic job. Yeah. But even in dealing with um, one of our other um, clients recently that bought a home and, mm -hmm. you know, they elected to do some of it on their own. And yet when it came to, you know, they had these beautiful like butch mat marked, butch mac, yeah. butch, uh, not butch, bookmarked, yeah. bookmarked pieces of stone where they sort of mirror each other where you you know put these things on like a wall where the fireplace is or something yeah. where they sort of kind of get that like butterfly-ish look you mm -hmm. know because it's mirrored and so yeah you know the person originally helped pick certain things out uh -huh. you know they're just like oh that's fine we've got it and they weren't there and they got they didn't they were put up incorrectly so you didn't get yeah. that effect you're supposed to and now they're basically glued to the wall so you're mm -hmm. stuck mm -hmm. another issue that happened um was that paint colors and you obviously know this, but just picking a swatch of paint and saying, oh, this looks right. You got to paint it up on a couple walls and see how it actually yeah. looks in the lighting. Oh and that was also a thing. So it's like I, I hear these and that's why I pull my hair out when people like to do. Look, and it's fine. People, it's their own money. They can do whatever they want. They can want. do whatever they want. It's but, their home for but sure. But so much of it, like you said, is just the execution of mm -hmm. getting the size and scale and the finished product, mm -hmm. you know, like pulling it all together because mm -hmm. if it's done wrong i mean if tiles laid incorrectly or oh, they put yeah. the wrong thing in the shower surrounds mm -hmm. and now you got to rip it up well you're you're paying you know you're working backwards you're and that's a great point a lot of our clients spend a lot of money making mistakes yeah. and by having a design professional in your corner you're avoiding those mistakes mm -hmm. simple right. things that people don't realize even like uh even when you're choosing a paint color let's go back to the paint mm -hmm. um you know i had clients of mine that would specify paint on their own they would mm -hmm. try to do it and they're like, it just looks so different. And it's like, well, let's look at why it looks different. We have to talk about, you know, getting technical here, color temperatures of lights. So let's say the color temperature in your house is 2700K and the one at the store was 3500K. Those are completely different light temperatures, which affect the color and the mm -hmm. spectrum of light. Now that again, those technical details, we're not just picking a pretty paint color. We know about the effects of lighting on color. Mm -hmm. So we're able to decide uh, which direction we should go with paint colors based on the color temperature we're working with. So obviously, you know, keeping those That's details huge. in mind make a really big difference. Mm -hmm. Again, those little details, the client has no idea what we're doing. Mm -hmm. But a client, again, we have the opportunity to give them those kind of details with color temperature, uh, spectrum, color correction indexes. Those mean nothing to the layman person because they're like, what does that mean? But I know when I'm specifying a light bulb, when we go to those kind of details, that that's going to affect our paint color and the outcome of our project. So, yeah, it's exciting. So it's just neat. And it's and it's something I wouldn't expect our the average homeowner to, no, to know no, because no. it's a whole it's a profession it's, it's a, a profession it's a whole ton of experience and i don't pretend to know what my doctor does i just know he he makes me feel better so whatever he prescribes i'll follow <laughs> so yeah. so besides paint um i'm monica i'm the director of sales for uh, rob jensen and i uh, deal a lot with uh, the feedback that mm -hmm. comes from showing our sellers homes mm -hmm. so what is it that you see in what you do are mistakes that people make when when do designing or mm -hmm. deciding on on doing some design um, options in their homes for sale? Um, you know, one of the biggest things I see is I, I get that they love certain items, uh, whether it's a piece of art or a certain paint color or a specific um, accent to the house. What I really do see is it's you're trying to do, you're trying to please the public, not just a specific person, and you're not the one trying to buy that house again you're trying to sell it so make it as palatable as possible uh, consider other public places that you've visited how neutral they are how clean and simple simplicity yeah. is always best it always gives the opportunity for the seller or i'm sorry the buyer to be able to kind of see them their space in there think of a hotel room when you mm -hmm. go in there it feels comfortable it feels neutral and inviting those simple simplistic elements that you see are the ones you should apply to your home because then you'll have the opportunity to kind of make them feel and you know in the in the industry that how the person feels in that home yep. uh is a big effect of whether they buy it or not absolutely um so 
How's the smell? Um, what does it look like? Is there plenty of light? Is it neutral and calming? Does it bring an environment? Uh, with interior design, our main goal is two things. Two main goals are safety and obviously um, environment for how you feel in that space. That's a big deal. You know, you go into a department store. How do you feel in there? Do you feel beautiful? Is the lighting gorgeous? Well, of course it is. It's done all on purpose. Now you go to like a fast food restaurant. It's hard surfaces to sit on, bright lighting, obnoxious colors. They want you in and out as quickly yep. as possible. That is all designed on purpose. Why is a spa calming, but a McDonald's restaurant isn't? Again, that environment needs to be considered in that house so that's a big deal for sure that's great mm -hmm. that's interesting it makes me think it's something i didn't think of even with the 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 opposite effect of you know hey it's not just about making them comfortable to stay it's making them get out of here too i yeah there's a couple things even when it comes to casino design that i had heard once that it reminds me of obviously the no clocks which we're aware of so you know you never know what no time natural it is. light <laughs> but the idea that the carpet is very busy so it keeps that's a 100 percent <laughs> true fact so, I so have, what does this do? So it influences you yeah. to look up. Like yeah. you don't want to look at the carpet. Oh, wow. look so up. it forces yeah. you to look. Um, and the other the reason why is the lighting. So obviously they have dramatic lighting. Mm -hmm. The lighting is harsh in certain areas, but it focuses on the machine. So there's dim lighting everywhere. Um, you know, carpeting, that's for sure. I have a friend it's that amazing. works for a hotel developer here in town. And that's their main goal. As busy as humanly possible, they make that carpet. Because it is obnoxious. You have to look up. So you're forced to look at the machines. Wow. So you're manipulated in every environment that you go to, department stores, shopping centers, um, you know, spas, homes. So, again, you need to keep that in mind when you're trying to, you know, design your home. It's not just for you. If you're trying to sell it, make sure that it's neutral enough and calming enough that it feels like it could be someone else's home. That's great. Thank you. So no purple walls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, we've got some people that have them. Yes, we know. Yes, we do. <laughs> yeah. Especially here. Exactly. <laughs> So give us some, you must have some like horror stories, so to speak, of things that went off the rails with projects. What, um, what you know, you right now it's, it, we're doing okay, but obviously there's uh, supply chain issues, but you know, we have to remember that it, the quicker you engage with a professional for a design, um, the better your project will be, uh, because it's not something that can be done overnight. This is not HGTV. There's not like, I'm not physically going to be painting a wall myself. Uh, my hands are far too soft. But again, <laughs> ideally, what I would recommend is engaging a professional sooner to take a look at the property that you're looking at. It doesn't hurt to do that. And, you know, some offer free consultations like we do uh, to be able to kind of walk the property with you to see what your options are, because sometimes people don't know where to start mm -hmm. and it feels overwhelming. And the good thing about having a professional like us in your corner is we can kind of value engineer where we can prioritize our dollars, because like you had mentioned before, there's a delicate balance between trying to obviously uh make the home yours but also keep a balance and cost because you don't want to out you know right and this was, this yeah. would be for yeah look if you're looking to sell yeah the um so maybe i was a little tough when i said to tell me about a horror story but yeah. give me a like give me a s scenario when working with the client where maybe they jumped in and you know jumped well, the gun so to speak or, well know. i had a client of mine who was uh we had a great working relationship, obviously. So we were working on the project, going through all the portions. She's like, you know what? I'm just going to go pick up my stone by myself. I'm like, all right, well, just make sure to send me a photo um, before you actually purchase, purchase it, just so I can kind of approve it. Um, and she's like, all right, I'll just go ahead and do that. I'm just going to do it online. So she did it online. Um, and I said, I don't recommend doing anything online because you'll need to be able to see it in person because the color variation is is pretty drastic. And mind you, we had this cantilevered island, which we had to install probably about, I want to say, 30 feet into the ground to offset the weight of this countertop. Ooh. So it's completely floating. Okay. Um, so we penetrated the slab into the ground 30 feet with an L-shaped uh like beam mm -hmm. so we finally got the material because she insisted she oh i love this material it looks perfect and then um, she never sent me a photo or got it approved it came in um and she was out of town in europe uh while the installation was happening 
So I get a panicked phone call from my project manager and she's like, this looks absolutely atrocious. You need to come and see this. Oh no. Um, oh, and mind you, the installation cost was about $15,000 just for these two counters. Oh, um, and plus another 75,000 for the rebar that's into the ground. Down. Um, so we came in and it was this awful mint green instead of like a gray. Oh. Uh, and so um, I video called the client. I'm like, this is green. She's like, that's not what I ordered. I'm like, that's 100% what you ordered. Um, and so she was started crying immediately. And I don't no. blame her. She was really upset. Yeah. You know, we had already spent $15,000 to install the stone right. and fabricate it. But oh. again, she decided to take that element out of our control. Right. Because what would have happened is we would have verified the material. Mm -hmm. We would have seen the material, done a submittal sample. We would have seen it at the fabrication. We would have coordinated installation. But she did those steps on her own. And at that point, we would have been able to stop that. Be like, you know what? We need to stop. This is wrong. But she thought she could take that element to her hand. So that was definitely uh, one of our horror stories. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I know. It's such a sad tail and yet it's it's common i mean obviously that was it's a very, very common like, expensive on the expensive one but mm -hmm. that's where people just don't get the the nuance mm -hmm. that goes into this and i really like what you brought up earlier is sort of like what is the experience you're creating for yourself like what is sort of the ultimate environment the environment you've built that you may not even really be aware of yeah. you know you may have picked some neat materials you know yeah just because it's unique doesn't make it good <laughs> that's true yeah we, we see plenty of that as well What's going on with design trends in 2022? So we're leaning toward more warm tones. So we're stepping away from the, everyone's doing gray and white, gray and white, gray and white. And we know that unfortunately it's been kind of, um, excuse my French, bastardized because now everyone and their mother does gray and white because it just seems like an easier point. But we are leaning towards more warm tones again. Mm -hmm. So warmer woods for cabinets mm -hmm. and case goods, baseboards and case. Um, we're still in the kind of the gray phase, but we're also leaning to more grayish, which is a like a brownish gray version mm -hmm. uh, because people want a little bit of warmth. They're trying to step away from those cool colors. So that's what we're seeing in the design trend. I'm seeing some warm jewel tones as well, like the green. You are as accents. Yeah. Yeah, um, so those are using those ones, rubles, things like that. Yeah, so they're kind of those are really nice. There. So they're yeah. definitely doing that. So these these projects, how long do they take? I mean, well, yeah. there's a lot of variation, obviously, with how long projects take. You mm -hmm. know, if you're doing like a full remodel down to the studs, um, depending on the square footages, you're probably leaning about like four to six months all together. So mm -hmm. that includes design planning, ordering materials and execution mm -hmm. um, because we do break them up in phases. Um, but if you're doing smaller remodels, we can get them usually pretty done in a couple of weeks, depending if the material is available. So if you're looking for something that's you know not as drastic as a whole remodel, but mm -hmm. you're just looking for small changes like flooring, uh, paint, maybe countertops or backsplash make a world of difference, you're probably just looking at a few weeks. That's great. Right. Yeah. Um, you'd shared a little bit of a story before where there was a, a different issue that had come up that was just came from lack of communication with your client. And, you know, we find that whether it's internally in the office or working with customers, it's like just about any time there's a problem, it's due to not you know, poor communication yeah. of sorts. Yeah. And um, I remember you telling me a story about something with them. Um, Someone had found a sale and maybe went and bought some of the appliances on their own or whatnot. Oh yeah, no, we had um, we had a, that's a great. I remember that one. So a client, uh, we were doing a kitchen remodel, um, and you know, case goods can get pretty expensive, especially custom case goods and cabinets. Yeah. So you're looking around one hundred and fifty thousand dollars for appli, you know, uh, just cabinets, um, and you know, we had given them proposals for appliances, which were you know kind of pricey, obviously around fifty thousand dollars. Yeah. Um, but the client's like, well, I found a sale, and you know, I'll just order these. Uh, I'll just take these appliances. So he just bought them without me. Um, and I'm like, mm, the cabinets are custom to the appliances. But he was under the understanding that, oh, no, all appliances are the same standard dimensions. Mm -hmm. They are Ooh. not the same standard dimensions. Um, they vary, especially on the high-end appliances that he was looking at, like Wolf or um, Gen A or things like that. Um, so obviously he gets the appliances. Again, I'm like, there's no way it's going to fit. And he's like, no, he assured me that, oh, it will, it will. It did not. So here, <laughs> here's the day of install. Mm -hmm. um, we have the case goods inside. We have the cabinets already. The cabinet, the counters have already been cut. Everything is in place and none of these appliances. He already spent $25,000. Now he has to spend another fifty dollars on the appliances he actually needs and fits. And the twenty five dollars he oh, just no. wastes because it's a final sale. Ah. So again, 
those little nuances, those small details are the reason why you hire professional. It's not so much that what we're doing is groundbreaking. It's not so much that what we're, our design is so unique. What you're hiring us really for is the execution to be impeccable, to avoid those design errors yeah. that I see constantly. Yeah, so. and, it, and it just makes me think even back to the other issue with the counters is communication. Yeah. Had you gotten that picture, maybe you would have noticed something or maybe yeah, you would have been like, exactly. oh, I know this name brand and it is mint. It green. is a it's mint just, green, yeah. So the, and I, it's obviously not fair to have you like quote any prices for things because yeah. um, I know every job's different, yeah. but you've obviously quoted some big numbers for some of these like full renovations with kitchens and new, you know, going into a the slab to yeah. reinforce the, the rebar and whatnot mm -hmm. for a counter. Can you give some general just ranges on, on, you know, let's just say it's a 5,000 square foot home, 4,000 square foot home, and they want to redo their kitchen, you mm -hmm. know, is there sort of a, a general range that you're seeing? I mean, of course, yeah. sky's the limit. Yeah, of but, course, the sky's the limit. But, but I think on average for something like that, like a 5,000 square foot home, you're probably on the low end, depending on what kind of changes you're looking, let's just say it's cosmetic. So uh -huh. paint, uh, maybe countertops, backsplash, and maybe a faucet, things like that. Yeah. Small changes of that, you're probably around the 10 to 15 range. Uh -huh. um, and obviously mid-grade, so that'd be like maybe upgrading the cabinet doors and yeah. refinishing the boxes or um, you know, replacing appliances with maybe mid-grade appliances. Uh, backsplash and stone you're probably looking around the 50 to 75 range and you know full custom you can go crazy the most expensive kitchen we've ever done was around four hundred thousand dollars um wow so the ca the cabinets alone were 200 okay. um so that was built-in features dividers organizers a custom stone from israel that we had gotten in a uh, hand laid tile from uh, spain that we put in the backsplash appliances were another 75 and by the time you get all that in, it's like four hundred thousand dollar kitchen. Wow! So yeah, must have been beautiful. Yeah, I know it was beautiful. I'm gonna uh, take off on the cabinetry yeah. question because yeah. a lot of times we we question whether you know what's better budget wise. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you know when it comes to kitchen cabinets, mm -hmm. full custom cabinetry is can be quite expensive. It can. Um, do you have an idea of the range where you just repaint versus reface? Because yeah, so a good rule of thumb that I like to say is usually by square uh, linear foot. Okay. So just imagine your cabinet, uh, you're facing the front of the cabinet and you have the base cabinets and the upper cabinets. Mm -hmm. uh, measure the distance between the end to end, so the linear footage. Mm -hmm. So let's say you have five foot, um, five linear feet. You would imagine about 150 a linear foot to refinish those cabinets. Got it. Yeah. It's good information to have. So that's, it's really a good rule of thumb to have. Yeah, so in case your great. clients ask you, like, hey, how much do you think this would cost? Well, if I'm looking at 10 feet, you know, you know, 150 a linear foot, that'll usually cover it. That's very helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's really neat. The, um, you know, and once again, what's tricky with all these projects is it's hard to do one thing without having to do another thing, which... It's like a fungus, goes. it grows. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you start with one area and it looks fantastic. And then yeah. the other, I was Ooh. like, wow, this looks terrible. Get excited. Yeah. And so then it's kind of spreads throughout. And majority of our clients always start with one little project and then they're like, oh my gosh, I need to do the rest of the house. Can't say I blame them. Because them. it's so blatantly <laughs> obvious when something has been designed professionally and something isn't. So you kind of have this mm -hmm. contrast that people don't like. So if you're so talk to us about free consultation. So if someone says, "Oh, I like what this Daniel guys, you know, talking yeah. about. I'd like to meet them. How does that work?" Oh, uh, you'll definitely contact our firm. You can either email us at mail at desiredspace.com or you can give us a call. Um, our number is 702-960-4400 and we can schedule a consultation uh, to your home. We'll schedule a visit that works with your schedule. Just walk the space. What you'll expect during that visit is we'll give you design ideas of what we recommend based on what we're information we get about you. Uh, we'll walk through the space, kind of figure out what's feasible and what isn't. Um, and then talk about budget and timeline. Those are kind of big deals uh, because those will all affect the design, obviously. So, yeah. Got it. And that consult, generally, how much time might that take? We usually allocate about an hour for that. So it's okay, very extensive. So we it like is, to yeah. uh, walk with our clients, make them uh, kind of go through the list of needs and wants that they have for that space and try to get an idea of what their lifestyle is like, because then we can recommend design elements for that. Yeah. And I, for one, you know, as a director of sales and dealing with buyers, um, we recommend using someone like you when we identify a house that 
has the potential of being the house yeah. before putting in an offer. Yeah. Um, just to walk the space and give them an idea of whether yeah, just it's so they feasible. have the relevant information. Correct. You know, because if they feel like they have more information, the better off they're able to make a decision. So agreed. As far as design elements and what you do, do you incorporate any kind of like things with feng shui and that science at all? Uh, we can occasionally, depending on which function you'd like, because I know some clients do believe in the kind of those energies mm -hmm. and setups. And that's something we can definitely help you with a consultation that we have. Um, we also have consultants we work with to be able to work with that as well. Perfect. Um, so some clients do require it because yes. it is it is something that's trending as well. Yes, and we and we yeah. do we do encounter it quite a bit. Yeah, so exactly. That's, yeah, so, so people that's why do I you know taking and those elements. Funny that you talk about feng shui are actually principles of interior design. So lighting control, uh, direction of sunlight, mm -hmm. you know the way the room flows. Those are all elements that are actually in interior design. Yes. So I know people think there's a disconnect or that might be some spiritual who. Uh -huh. but there is a lot, actually a lot of theory yeah. and that that's correct yeah that's great yeah i love it we had when it comes to feng shui normally that's something that seems to be a deal killer because people mm -hmm. will bring someone in and and they'll say something oh that, the energy's yeah. wrong or yeah, yeah exactly but, but it's south facing stove no <laughs> <laughs> but i do remember we had one property once that happened it was in the lakes and it happened to be they brought in some feng shui person which apparently you can't like pay you have to it was like a referral and can yeah. only made a donation or something like that and they drew some map of mm -hmm. the city and literally our listing was on this line this like meridian or whatever <laughs> That's so they, they basically had no choice but to buy yeah, you know this listing, which was fantastic. So well, that's it great. worked out. <laughs> it was on the line, right? Well, they shouldn't have let us let me know that on the <laughs> listing side because clearly that was maybe that'll you'll list it as a benefit next time on that on yeah. Meridian line, right? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, um, oh, that's pretty exciting. So, anything else that's been kind of like fun with the design world in terms of I don't know whether it's you know what you I've know, been seeing a lot lately is a lot of hospitality design elements now being brought into residential. So things that you would normally normally see in like hotel situations will now be incorporated in uh, residential design. Such so, as what? Like master bedroom suites are now becoming more hotel suites. So we have beverage centers, wet bars, we have um, steam rooms in there. Mm -hmm. uh, we have better lighting for tasks, uh, just becoming more hotel like. I think people mm -hmm. are trying to take elements that are comfortable in a hotel application or hospitality and incorporating them into their home, um, which is kind of a new direction that we're seeing right now. What about materials? Is there anything? Uh, right now, a big material right now that I would highly recommend is called three form. Um, so it's a resin panel. Just imagine uh, two sheets of uh, plastic or resin, mm -hmm. uh, but in between they're fused with natural materials like uh, sticks or reeds or uh, pine needles to give this beautiful textured effect that you can hang on the wall or make countertops with or room really? dividers or doors. It's a very flexible material. And that's something, again, that was more in the hospitality mm -hmm. end, but now is leaning in towards residential, like for countertops, um, wall mm -hmm. applications, room dividers. Just imagine a piece of wood that you can do whatever you want with. This is the same kind of material. It's really quite unique. I'll look into that one. Mm -hmm. And along those lines with materials, when you were talking about, I think it was a, the Spanish tile that was a backsplash, mm -hmm. like where do you, where did you get the idea to find that or place so, that? Or? Well, it's funny because it, again, it goes back to programming. What's the design style that we're trying to attend to? Um, with that being said, we have access to a lot more resources than most, um, you know, retail clients. Mm -hmm. So we have a catalog and we have obviously resources with different vendors around the world to be able to get really unique materials. So this isn't something you're going to find at Home Depot or Lowe's or, you know, even your local small tile shop. Um, so with that being said, we found that Spanish tile because we wanted more of a Spanish colonial look in that kitchen. Mm -hmm. um, and nothing that was available to the public was in that realm. It's all, you know, three by six subway tile or glass mosaics. So we needed a handmade tile uh, from Spain uh, from a company that we had actually found from the architectural firm that owned um, the work that Gaudí had done. So Gaudí oh, wow. is a, a famous uh, Spanish architect and 
his kind of mosaics are uh, kind of a cornerstone mm -hmm. of his architecture. So with that being said, we found a company that mimics those. So we were quite happy to do that. They must have been stunning. Oh, yes. Awesome. It's very expensive. But I can very imagine. Stunning. <laughs> yeah. well, and that, that brings up a whole other point of just... And once again, this is just when it comes to hiring professionals mm -hmm. is that your experience is you're just tuned into all these people and stores and materials like it's just what you live in. Well, well, you, you have you know? to remember so, that we we take we, we're constantly processing new information. Mm -hmm. We are on the cutting edge of design at every point, especially our firm. So we take part in design trade shows. We visit and do product knowledge uh, meetings with all our vendors. So we know what's on the cutting edge. Um, you know, we, we, we can forecast things even before they're done, even color trends, you know, and that's one of the big deals of going with a professional is because they're constantly you you can only get better if you're constantly updating yourself. So looking at new products, looking at new information, looking at new installation methods, those are all details that give us that cutting edge. Yeah, and it's, it's just exposure is kind of another word for it where, yeah. you know, when it comes to pricing homes, so when people call us and they want to sell their home, mm -hmm. you know, we, we do that all the time and we're great at it. Yeah. However, a lot of times I'll, I'll bring in an appraiser sometimes to look at properties in unique situations because their barometer is such that they're in homes that are sold all the time. So, for yeah. example, we do a lot of work with Scott Dugan, and he's in and out of the Summit and McDonald Highlands and in and out of these, you know, mm -hmm. five, ten, twenty million dollar homes. And so, so he's in every single, a lot of them, not every single one of them yeah. that sold. So his barometer is like, how, what were the views? How are the finishes? What did it go into contract for? How many offers did they have? Was it, you know, mm -hmm. his like tapping into his read on things mm -hmm. is really beneficial because as an agent, yeah. you know, we're of course selling clients properties, but we spend most of our time walking through homes that are for sale. Yeah. And so in a lot of these homes are maybe overpriced or, you know, I have all different fits and finishes. So we, we have an idea of, you know, what's out there and the options and the general pricing, but Scott can sometimes just have this extra, little like inside tracker yeah, just almost like, almost a, purview, like a, it's yeah. almost like a sixth sense yeah. of like where things might be yeah, just because exactly. of where he spends his time yeah and just same with you mm -hmm. and you know d design professionals in Again, general like you mentioned yeah. exposure so yeah and it's you know like, there's a lot of factors that we go into that obviously kind of figuring out our ex our education our background mm -hmm. our experience with projects remember if you're hiring a design professional they've already done plenty of projects on the back end so they've already kind of nailed down experiences they've had mm -hmm. um because again like with the countertops you know i'm like oh i really need to see a physical sample you just cannot right. choose online right um so well and, and then it just also the experience of juggling the different vendors and you know when you're talking about 90 percent, for example being the, execution, the execution yeah, yeah. You've, you've got that experience just same thing bringing it back to a little self-promotion with real estate i mean when it comes to you know there's a lot people can do themselves to you know try and put a home up for oh, yeah. you know it, but it's like when it comes to executing things on a professional level with marketing you need a professional and sales yeah. mem team members and, and knowing the market all yeah. of that no, then that's sure. where you know you get what you pay for yeah, exactly <laughs> but like why does my house look terrible well you know you would try to attempt to <laughs> copy everyone and we didn't execute it right so yeah. super that's, that's usually the big problem well it's been fun having you so yeah, thank appreciate you. it and uh take thank care you. thank you thank so much you.